Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at the Arch-based Linux distribution, Endeavor. It is the future of Antergos, since Antergos has now shut down, or been discontinued. So it seems like there was a good community behind the distribution, but perhaps less so on the development. Well, I was trying to think, have I actually looked at Antergos? And yes, apparently I did, back in 2017. And to be honest, back then it did look quite a promising distribution, there was quite a variety you could choose from on the desktops. The install was there, and there was, um, there was a few applications pre-installed. But overall, I think at the time I found it to be quite easy to use for an Arch-based distribution. So this time around with Endeavor, they really have started, well, almost back from scratch, I'd say. Because what we have at the moment is XFCE desktop as a flagship desktop. Uh, in fact, that is the only desktop at the moment. There will be more desktops in future, though. Yeah, this time around, though, I would say it seems like a lot more basic. Although I would certainly say it's much easier to use than Arch, because out of the box, you've got a nice GUI installer with calamaris. As we would expect from an Arch distribution, boot up is very quick. What is memory usage? Ooh, not as low as I would expect, about 500 meg. So this is the XFCE 4.14 desktop, so that's the new release of XFCE. So it's kind of got a dual purpose this video. We can look at the newer version of XFCE and take a look at an Arch distribution that was easy to use out of the box. Taking a look at the CPU usage there, yeah, it's minimal, not really much happening at all. Is it even worth me looking at the kernel? Well, no, not really, it's gonna be the newest. Let's start off with the greeter. Nice simple welcome screen, you can install Endeavor to the hard drive, which I already have done. So yeah, there's some links to the Endeavor website. After install, what would you need? We've got shortcuts to update the system. Now I expect this being an Arch distribution, there would be quite a lot, but what would you mean there's no updates? Come on Arch, I installed this system a few hours ago. I would expect there to be quite a few updates in that time. God, can't get the staff these days, can you? Honestly. Package management, and oh, we've got a few different links here. This is more help guides on the website though, but uh, yeah, I suppose if that's all they can manage at this point, then okay, we'll go with it. Basic commands of Pac-Man. Yeah, because there's no GUI package manager here. We're going to have to use Pac-Man. <laughs> okay, I did. I did install a few things. I'm not that much of a noob with Arch. NVIDIA users. So they do provide an NVIDIA driver installer. I did take a look at it. There's a few different options on which driver you can use, depending on the... NVIDIA graphics card you may have in your system. Some links to install popular applications. LibreOffice, yeah, they don't install an Office application on here. So we'll do that. Run for an install and see how simple it can be. It's easy as that. Yes, easy as that when they provide you a nice link. Anyway, let's move onwards. So yeah, this is the XFC 4.14 desktop. Same old launch that I've seen before. Was that a slightly different style? Ah yes, the whisker menu. Got a few links to some common applications there. The currently open applications, desktop switcher, notification menu where we've got an easy check for updates or system upgrade. That's nice because I was dreading having to use the command line all the time. You do have the option to do most things from the GUI here, even if it is just a link to the terminal interface. And as far as applications go, it is fairly minimal. Uh, I've installed a couple of things just to mess around. I installed Inkscape. Just take a look at the speed of opening Inkscape. It's pretty quick. Does it get better the second time around? Not overly, maybe slightly. You do get Firefox as a web browser. I was a bit puzzled why they put ZenMap on here in the NMAP security scanner. Seems an odd thing to include. I installed KDN Live just because I wanted to see how the KDE applications looked. Slightly different to the rest of the desktop, but uh, yeah, just fairly basic looking, but perhaps not overly hideous. Oh good, we've got LibreOffice now. So now to look at the other side of this video, the uh, changes of XFCE 4.14. So there's certainly some under the hood changes with the better support for the high definition displays and users of NVIDIA graphics cards. Opening up a picture and let's take one of these final wallpapers from Charlie Henson. Honestly, he's really good for his artwork, and I'll leave a link to it in the video, because a lot of the wallpapers I use are from him, so yeah. Can't rate them enough. So yes, we've got the option of setting wallpaper directly from Ristretto, the image viewer. Hopefully that worked. 
uh, oh, let's try and find the close, minimize, maximize buttons, which are on the right hand side here. You know, so I'm too used to them being on the left hand side, and that's my problem. We now have a native screensaver, and what an appropriate screensaver to use little XFC mouse. I can't really get overly excited about that in a time when screensavers seem to be disappearing, but if you still like using them, then yeah, why not? If you do a screen capture, yeah, which I probably should have opened something up, but anyway, I just wanted to show you the screen capture. We now have the option of hosting onto Imga. So I'm not going to proceed with that. Just wanted to demo that feature now exists. I have to say it does seem a bit of a step back from Antergos, but on the other hand, I can see that if they have to start again with minimal development, then yeah, this could be a way to go. To start with the basics and then build up from there. Once they've encouraged more developers to come across the project, once they've increased the size of the community, yeah, all that could be worthwhile doing. So yeah, start with the basics, build up from there. In terms of installing Endeavor, it was really easy. The Calamari's installer makes it so simple to do. The initial setup of the system with installing packages will have to be done through the command line using Pacman. But once you've got the system up and running, I think ongoing maintenance could be done through the GUI. So, thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.